My name is Magdalena Kristofiak and I am a certified Reiki master here in Las Vegas. Um, so I have one older sister, her name is Alexandra. My mom is Maria and my father was Mieczysław. And we were, we grew up and immigrated from Poland. Uh, so being born in Poland, um, first I was born in Gdynia in Poland. Uh, afterwards we moved to a beautiful place where my father was from, Zakopane. It's a winter capital of Poland, beautiful mountains, it's right on the Slovakia border. Um, so as a little girl I was skiing, hiking, uh, we had everything in nature. We learned a lot about the wild animals, uh, we got to play a lot outside and we didn't have anything to worry about. Uh, even though it was during communism days, but our parents made sure that we had the most blessed and happy childhood. Uh, currently, I'm um, working as a business consultant for a franchise company here in uh, Las Vegas. Reiki is a form of natural healing. Um, uh, certified Reiki practitioners, they have to go through um, training. It's a, a course, can take three, four days. Uh, we have level one, level two, three and four. Uh, level four is the master's degree. Um, so starting with level one, you learned uh, the history behind Reiki. Um, you learn level two, you learn the symbols how to apply the symbols. Um, there's a lot of different techniques. Uh, you can also do healing on animals, plants, not just people. Um, but it's, uh, it's, very, it's a very rewarding um, practice, I believe. Since Reiki is a very relaxing session, um, I have a lot of really positive feedback, so, but um, there's different things that you can experience during a Reiki session. It can be um, different emotions. Um, speaking for myself, when I had my first Reiki session, I cried. So basically for me, the crying part was healing. So even though a lot of people think that crying is a negative emotion, but it's actually a positive because you're releasing all the negativity and everything that you've been holding inside. So, um, but most of the part, I believe that it's a very relaxing experience and I've never had any negative feedback at all. So, um, when we're doing the hand placement, sometimes you can feel I know I feel tingling sensations. Uh, the patient or uh, my client can also feel uh, the hand movements, uh, changes in temperature. Uh, what else have I had? Um, tingling, like you, ex uh, you mentioned. Oh, absolutely. I have a lot of people that fall asleep on the table. It's okay, <laughs> it's great. <laughs> when we be, uh, begin the Reiki session, I always ask my, my client if it's okay for me to touch them, because it is hands-on healing, but we don't have to. So there's certain areas that I can use their own ha um, hands, and I can just move my hands a little bit above theirs. Um, but other than that, we can always just even Keep our hands a little bit above an inch or so, and it's still gonna do what Reiki does. Reiki works for people that believe. You have to believe Reiki works, but also, um, if somebody doesn't believe in Reiki and they're rejecting Reiki, then it's not going to work. Absolutely. I actually have an example of uh, 
doing Reiki on a plant. I have my Monstera plant, which I bought when I was a tiny little baby. I call it my little baby. Um, I performed Reiki on it when I was changing the pots. I held the plant by its roots and I performed Reiki and I planted it back. And here we go, it's a monster. So every time we start a Reiki session, we always place, uh, place symbols in our hands. That way our hands are more powerful. So afterwards, um, using our own energy with our hands, it's, our hands transform the energy into, so it doesn't matter if I'm placing a symbol or if I'm simply touching it. I was always looking for my purpose in life, so when I found out what Reiki was, um, I began my Reiki journey in it. I wanted to help people. So growing up, I always had, uh, whether it was my family members, my friends, people coming to me for help. Um, and I just ended up taking the courses, finished all my levels, and it's very rewarding for me because I've helped a lot. A lot of people. Um, besides Reiki giving me a purpose in life and helping others, I can also perform Reiki on myself. Um, we can open or close, or well, close, you don't want to close your chakras, but we can open our own chakras. We can uh, put protection on ourselves every single day. Uh, we can use it at work. If you have a meeting, um, there's different ways you can apply Reiki in your everyday life. So it's very rewarding. And also you can put symbols on your food, your water, and it's healthier. So I have a set of uh, tuning forks. They're especially made for um, Reiki healing. Um, each one is for each chakra. So we have all the chakra points. But this is one of my favorites. So when I'm doing um, emotional and uh, mental healing, I use this at the end of my session because it sounds beautiful and it's called the laugh fork. Always puts a smile on your face. I also have a set of crystals that you can use during your Reiki session and each one is for a chakra. So for crown, third eye, throat, heart, solar plex, sacral and root. So you can place these crystals over all the chakras when you're working on your client. This is my client, Saida Salman, and she's a yoga instructor. Today we're going to demonstrate how we perform um, mental emotional healing. And this is my client, Saida Salman, and she is a yoga instructor here in Las Vegas. I'm going to perform emotional mental healing today on Saida, and I'm going to demonstrate the steps. I'm going to have you lay down, please. Thank you. Since yoga, uh, since Reiki is hands-on healing, I'm going to ask Saida if it's okay that I touch her a little gently and use my pendulum um, to see if her chakras are open or closed. I have a very special pendulum that I bought in a store not too long ago. Um, it's a pink quartz. I use it for emotional and mental healing because it's filled with love. Um, so the little story behind this little pendulum was, um, took me a little while to walk through the store, but I was walking by a section where they had these pendulums hanging. And this pendulum was swinging from side to side 
and it was the only one that was moving. So I think this stone actually picked me. So I hope it's going to give a lot of love. Saida, is it okay if I touch you? Yes. Are you diabetic? No. And now I'm going to check her chakras, starting with the crown chakra. Next is her third eye. It's closed. Next one will be the throat chakra. Fourth chakra will be the heart chakra. Next is the solar plex chakra chakra. Sixth chakra is the sacral chakra. And the last one is the root chakra that is that keeps us grounded. Saida had only one closed chakra and that was the th uh, throat chakra. So I'm going to unblock her chakra. This is a cleansing technique that we use. And now I'm going to use the light to close her chakra. For emotional and mental healing, there is a um, few symbols that we use. So I'm going to place the proper symbols from her from her crown chakra, her third eye, her throat, and her heart. The bottom three have different symbols. So we have to make sure that we do them appropriately. After applying all the symbols, I'm going to close Saida's aura, starting with the feet. And we're going to fluff it to make it look extra pretty. You may now open your eyes for the movie. 
And that concludes our emotional mental healing session. Thank you.